Close your eyes and notice your breath. When you breathe in, notice where you feel it. When you breathe out, notice where you feel it. Focus your attention there. And then ask yourself, is the breath comfortable? Could it be made more comfortable? You can experiment for a while. Long breathing, short breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light. Try to see what kind of breathing feels satisfying for the body right now. Because the breath is a form of nourishment. Without it, the mind and the mind would go their separate ways. It's what keeps everything together. So make sure that this glue is in good shape. And we focus on the breath. Not so much that we're going to get the breath, but ultimately we want to come and look at the mind. Because as the Buddha said, this is where the, our problems come from. They don't come from things outside in the world. They come from our own unskillful habits. All the Buddha's teachings focus in on the mind. Tomorrow is Maka Pucha. It's a Buddhist holiday. Maka is the name of the month. Pucha means the homage you pay during this month, February, March. It was on the full moon day of this month, the first year of his teaching career, that the Buddha had a spontaneous meeting. He had 1,250 Aran disciples. All of them had completed their duties in terms of gaining purity of mind. He was going to send them out to teach. So without having made a prior announcement, they all came that afternoon. And he gave a summary of the major, major points of his teachings. It began with not doing any evil, developing your skills to their highest level, and then cleansing the mind so it's clean. Okay, we abstain from all kinds of evil. We do our best to make our goodness as full as we can. Because more ordinarily, we, there are some forms of evil that we avoid, and others that we say, well, it doesn't matter too much, it doesn't matter. Might as well go ahead and do it. Done a lot of other good things, so that should weigh in my favor. As the Buddha said, even the slightest bit of evil, you have to see that as, as big as a cloud. I think back in those days, the biggest thing you could think of was a cloud that covered the whole sky, it was bigger than the sky. In other words, any. Anything in which you would act on greed, aversion, and delusion, any way you would act that you would harm yourself or harm others, you have to see it as an actual problem, nothing that can be just wished away. And so you're very careful not to do anything that you know would be bad for you, bad for other people. At the same time, you develop all your skills until they're fully skillful. The skills of discernment, the skills of persistence, the skills of mindfulness, virtue, concentration, discernment, generosity, all the good things you can think of, trying to develop all the skills. We're all generous to some extent, we're all virtuous to some extent, but try to be skillful in your virtue, be skillful in your generosity. And then finally, cleansing the mind. We don't like to be told that our minds are dirty, but when greed, aversion, and delusion come in, they obscure the mind. It's like a film or a piece of glass. It's a film that is allowed to stay there, then it picks up more film and more film and more dust, and finally you can't see through the glass at all. And this is the problem with our minds. We don't know our minds really well because there's so much greed, aversion, and delusion in there, the obscuring things. So we want to cleanse it away. This is what we're doing as we meditate, is having some space here inside the mind where you can see what's actually going on. Because the mind does have that quality that it can observe itself. And so use that to cleanse the mind. Any place you see where thoughts would head, head off in the wrong direction, you can say, no, I'm not going to go there. Replace those thoughts with better thoughts. Think of your mind as a committee. There's some members of the committee are going to have to be removed from the committee. And others who are good but weak have to be strengthened. And that way the mind clears up inside and it can show some of its radiance. So this is the message that the Buddha gave, or one of the messages that the Buddha gave for his disciples to teach others. The disciples at that point, of course, had completed their duties, but now they're going to go out and teach others. And the Buddha started them out with really basic stuff, but going all the way up to the highest level of the practice, which is having a totally pure mind, a totally clean mind, a mind that's bright, that doesn't think of anything that would cause any harm or trouble to anybody at all. 
It doesn't aim at anything that will cause any harm. Because it's really solid inside. It's found its happiness inside. There's no need to go out and take things from other people. There's the happiness of a clean mind, happiness of a pure mind. So we should work in that direction ourselves. Because after all, the Buddha didn't teach these things just for the sake of a discussion. He discovered that he had found true happiness by following these principles, and he wanted other people to find true happiness too. He had that amount of concern for us. So we should have some concern for ourselves. Clean up our act, basically, is what he's saying. When you clean up your act, then you find that you have something of real value inside that was disguised by all the dust that had been allowed to accumulate. <laughs>